Hello, hello everybody out there. It's a lovely Sunday evening here in Warsaw, Poland, in my studio. I'm Paul, this is my humble YouTube channel. And yes, I can stay in the studio as long as I want because my girlfriend went for a movie festival outside the city. And it's a perfect time to shoot a tutorial that I promised you. I made a poll on my channel and I asked you which one of the tutorials you'd like to see. And you said, how? to separate elements of your mix. This is the tutorial you wanted me to shoot, and this is what's gonna happen today. So, how to separate elements of your mix in different ways? Let's go. Of course, if you think my channel is a cool place, if you like my vids and my studio, you can always subscribe somewhere here. You can support me somewhere here. You can always like this vid and comment on it. So we start one more discussion. Of course, for the purposes of today's demonstration, I created a short loop consisting of drums, bass, keys and vocals. And I did some basic premix here, some basic EQing, basic compression, clipping on groups and on separate tracks, but it's far from ready and we will not mix it like we should. We will not use for example, any limiters, any extensive EQing on its own. We will focus only on separating the mix better so that we can compare what we have, the output, and what we are starting with, which is this loop. And I'm going to play it to you right now. My ears hurt a bit still because there is some very, very basic pre-mixing, but the elements of this loop are not separated. They are way too blended and I think I can make it better in some quick moves that I'm going to show you. The first step is... Yes, you might find it totally surprising but it's true in so many cases and i learned this on my very own productions on my very own tracks there are some notes playing in the places they should not play they are interfering with some other instruments simply there are too many notes sometimes and really review your arrangement first before you get into any serious mixing because making a good arrangement makes things mix themselves sometimes with ease. And yes, this is true. And that's what I'm going to do now, because I have a feeling I'll turn off the vocals. I have a feeling that there is too much happening in the keys. Yes, I will try to reduce number of notes in the keys. Give me a second. Yes, so what I did is that I removed a couple of notes and also I shortened uh, some note values. It's better, I think, but maybe I could do something about drums. Mm -hmm. Give me a second. Yes, the groove is still dense, but it's easier, uh, less syncopated, let's say. I think the bass is fine, and let's listen to all this together. Yes, I think it's better 
there were too many notes playing, especially in the keys. So this is a cool starting point, I think. And we can move to number two. Basic static EQing, subtractive usually. Uh, because, well, one of the main mistakes I did back then when mixing was that I was soloing instruments too much. I was trying to shape the tone, not listening to the context of the whole thing. So yeah, I shaped some tone, but then I unsolo usually everything that I have, and I try to focus on mm, fitting everything in. And still, I, I think that I'll start with the keys uh, and I'll do some additional EQing because they still interfere a bit with the drums, both in the low end and somewhere between mids and tops. I think I would make some space for the drums out there uh, backing off uh, the keys. Let's listen. Yes, I sincerely believe it's already way better just with two simple steps, reviewing the arrangement and seeing my EQ, static EQ settings for keys. And now let's move to step three. Yeah, that's nothing special. This is bread and butter for all the home studio enthusiasts and both professionals. But it's really important to remember it and to know how to apply it. Of course, the easiest way, the most useful way to use it is between your kick or simply drums and your bass. And that's exactly what I'm going to do now because I like the tone of the bass. But after the compressor that's out there on bass, I will use some Pro C2. Yes, let's say we will leave it here. Mm, I used some mm, additional side training EQ uh, for the input, as you could see, uh, so that I focused my compressor on the kick content uh, because the first note of the bass and the kick, they go together. This is the main moment, uh, the main element I have to take care of. Of course, I could sculpt it more, but let's say this is enough for now. And now, number four. It's also quite obvious kind of bread and butter, right? I have to tell you that I use it rarely myself because I prefer method number five that's going to follow. But of course, this is an important step, a step a lot of people like to use. It's a very efficient tool when you know how to use it and it provides you with great separation results. So we will actually use it. Let me just think where. I have an idea for my keys, I think. The lower register of the keys here will take the signal from drums so that we will additionally dip a bit what's happening in the low end of the keys so that when the kick hits, there is some additional space. Let's see how it works. Yes, my friends, that's it. Let's get to step number five. Dynamic EQing. And you can use different side chaining EQs with some custom bands you set up manually. But you know what? I do it my way. 
and I called it dynamic EQing. It's kind of EQing, but I use Sooth 2 for this, which is an amazing tool for this. And this is my main use for Sooth 2. And it does wonders in side chaining mode. Take a look. I believe we will need some separation between keys and vocals right now. And I will additionally try to move the keys a little bit back so that they don't interfere so much with the vocals. It's like this right now. Uh, somewhere in higher mids, it's get, it gets a bit too messy for me and I have an idea how to fix it. And uh, custom settings on Sooth 2, like the way it's by default, it's really great. Someone made it really work. I didn't have to move it uh, much to make it all happen. And the effect it's having, it's very subtle, like you may not hear it directly. But when we compare the first premix and the second one, I believe you will hear that the vocals are a bit more exposed. They got the right place and the keys did not lose anything that they uh, feature, but they are not interfering so much. Now I will do some little tweaks using all the methods I described for you to not to polish, to improve this premix a bit. <laughs> Guys, uh, I think that's it. I didn't touch any mm, channel faders, group faders. I kept the levels as they were in the beginning. I only used five subtractive mainly methods. You, you can see here I was just reducing the signals and the note content of the arrangement. I will render it now and we will compare it against what we had at the very start. All right, it's ready. I rendered everything. I put it, it on my timeline in some order, let's say. I will play it to you, but please remember, this is not a ready mix. No mastering compression, mastering EQing, limiting, clipping whatsoever is included. This is the same pre-mix with some elements separated. That's the only difference. This is what we are focusing on while listening. Let's go. Yes, that's it, guys. Uh, the difference is quite subtle, of course, but there is a difference, if you ask me. I hope you can hear it too. Now I can understand the groove itself, like the drums are a bit more punchy. I did nothing to drums. I made some space between elements, but the drums are better articulated. Also, the roads, uh, uh, the keys are not interfering with the vocals, so madly like they found a place somewhere in the middle also the fact that there are less notes plates uh, i like it and the low end it's already cleaner than what i have in the beginning maybe we can take one more listen before we sum the things up That's it, my friends. Let's sum the things up. Okay, 
there are two things I'd like to say at the very end of this video. The first one is that I excluded on purpose any stereo imaging or mid-side mixing, which I also use a lot, because this is kind of a large area to me. I didn't simply want it to include it. I prefer to make it a separate episode. So I uh, decided to focus solely on dynamic processing and EQing in this tutorial. Please remember about this. The second thing is, and it's more important, I think, that I hope you really like this tutorial because I'm not into many tutorials on this channel. The reason is that there are so many tutorials on YouTube and don't get me wrong, but most of them are crap, but some of them are actually really great and they are made by producers and mixers more experienced than I am. And this is the way I respect my public and I try to keep honest that I may not be the first guy to make tutorials for other people. I decided to go for one to see your reactions, to see the view count, to see your comments, whether you like it or not. And maybe I will try to do more of them, but I'm really in no rush because I know some people who are terrific teachers and they simply are more experienced than I am. And I have no problem right now with admitting this. Anyway, I hope you liked it because I really do think that's kind of verified knowledge, what's been out there. And I hope you're gonna be back for more soon. And let's discuss things down below. Thank you, see you soon.